Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is a first in a short series taking a look at WordPress security plugins. Last week, I was speaking with Michael Edwin and Nelson Therian of the Dynamic WordPress group, and we were talking about the WordPress security plugins that we've used and our thoughts about them. This seemed like it would be a useful topic to report on. In this first video, I'm taking a look at the all-in-one WP security and firewall plugin. This is a good free solution. In subsequent videos, I'll take a look at iTheme security together with the BBQ firewall, at PatchStack, at WordFence, and at a couple of other options that I've used, Malcare and WP Security Ninja Pro. There's a companion article to this series available on the WebTNG website that has more information, and it also has a feature comparison chart of the nine security plugins that are mentioned in the series. The first solution I'm looking at is the all-in-one WP Security and Firewall, or AIOS, <laughs> which is a free plugin available in the WordPress plugin directory. There's some interesting things about this. First, it's got more than a million active installs. It's got more than a thousand five-star reviews, and it has 63 out of 68 questions in the last two months have been closed. So the team is active in supporting its users. And here's kind of a standout thing about AIOS, and that is that it's a totally free option. In addition to my main websites, I also have some testing websites online. And these testing sites are a good place for me to test out different themes and plugins. And security plugins are one of the things I've tried. The first one is AIOS, and I've got that installed here on this testing site. When you activate it, you get a menu item called WP Security, and these are the various admin pages. I've already gone through and configured it for my site, but when you first install it, these kind of main categories are off and the settings are disabled. So you have to go through the pages and tabs one by one carefully to turn on the features that you want. On the dashboard page, there's this kind of security meter. I kind of think that's a little cheesy, so I ignore it but some people might find it useful. Another thing on this dashboard page is that there's an option for maintenance mode, and so we'll come back and look at that in a couple of minutes. So here's some system information. Here are IP addresses that have been locked out according to the features that we've enabled in rules. You can have a permanent block list, and you can turn on debug logs if you need to. These are some kind of overview information here you can back up, make a copy of your HT access file, back up, make a copy of your WP config file. You can hide the WordPress version and meta information. And this is a good one. Once you get your settings the way you want them, you can export them and import them into a new site to kind of speed up the process the second time. And then this is an option for changing how it detects the remote address. Here you set your options for user accounts. And notice that there's these badges. There's basic, intermediate, and advanced. It's kind of a clue for users who are perhaps not as familiar to know what it's safer to enable. There's a display name option and a tool for testing password strength. These are something you've probably seen in other plugins. It's maximum number of login attempts, option to lock out somebody if they're trying usernames that don't exist, like admin. Here you have a log of failed logins. You can force people to log out after a certain amount of time, account activity logs, and a list of logged in users. Here you can require manual approval add registration recaptcha and a registration honeypot. You can change the database prefix and enable automatic periodic backups of your database. Check the default file permissions of folders and some of the main WordPress files. Disable the theme and plugin file editors 
disable access to some of the default WordPress configuration files and make sure people can't access the host system logs. You can enable a blacklist options, you can enable basic firewall settings, you can disable XML RPC if it's not being used. This is another attack vector, a place where people can log in. You can check or uncheck different categories of firewall rules, like for directory listings. You can add the 6G firewall rules from the 6G PHP firewall. Locking internet bots. Preventing hot links for your images. There's some basic 404 detection here, not a whole lot. And then you can add your own rules. An option to hide the login page, which some people want to do. It doesn't make your site more secure, but it makes it so some of the bots that are just going for the default login page won't find it. Uh, there's options for setting a cookie when people try to log in adding recaptcha to your login page, having a login whitelist and a honeypot. There's spam prevention for your comment form for BuddyPress and BBPress. The scanning option, this is scanning for file changes. This malware scan is not part of the plugin, so the AIOS doesn't have any malware scanning. And then this is the maintenance mode option that I was mentioning. You can check this if you want to show a maintenance mode message on the front end if your site's under development, or in my case, it's a testing site. So this is obviously not, you know, pretty themes and stuff like that. I mean, you could add images, but it's kind of a basic feature that works for me. I'm gonna go ahead and log out and we'll go to the front page and see this is what it looks like. There's one more thing I want to look at in relation to all-in-one WP security, and that is there's this website, WP Hive. It tests free plugins in the WordPress plugin directory in several areas. I don't think it's the be-all, end-all, or final word, but it is one data point among several. And so I want to take a look at these security plugins, see what it says about them on WP Hive. And as you can see, the kind of test that it has is memory usage, page speed, errors and warnings, JavaScript issues, PHP compatibility, WordPress compatibility, database footprint, activation errors, resource errors, frequently updated. Okay, and it shows no issues for all-in-one WP security and firewall. So that's a nice affirmation there. Some things that All-in-One Security doesn't do and that you would need additional plugin or achieving some other way, the big ones are two-factor authentication and regular malware scans. Also, the firewall doesn't receive any just-in-time updates. So if there's a new zero day, there isn't gonna be a firewall rule to protect you against that. One thing that struck me when I was setting up All-in-One was that some of the omissions like the just-in-time firewall rules or the malware scanning, those are things that have to be kept up to date on a daily basis. And since this is a free plugin, that kind of makes sense that those wouldn't be included because it would be a lot to expect that the volunteers who are creating this plugin for free are going to spend all day keeping those lists up to date. So anyway, while there are a couple of important features missing, I'm pretty happy with all-in-one WP security and firewall. I think it's a good choice for a single user, basic WordPress site. Obviously, it's working on more than a million sites. So this is the first solution that I wanted to throw out there that I've been using and that works well. There is a companion article that goes along with this mini-series available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Hope you found this look at all-in-one WP security and firewall interesting. Thank you for watching.